DJ Quest. Stupid. 105.5 The Beat. Swayze, man. Thank you very much. Paul said it was a nice record and all. But when you put it and you nice it up and you put it in the Miggy to Miggy to remix, man, forget about it. I'm Scrappy. And as disc jockeys here at 105.5 The Beat, it's kind of hard every once in a while for us to express ourselves to you because we're either embarrassed, we have too much pride. Not me. I'm talking about the, all the other disc jockeys here at 105.5. I pretty much don't give a damn. I'll tell you anything about myself, but I don't want to really talk about the pill-popping incident and the drug smuggling into Mexico from Alabama. I'd rather just keep that one to myself. Nonetheless... You know, it's really hard as a nighttime disc jockey, DJ Quest, to step up to the microphone and tell you how successful he is. Because he's a humble guy. He's awesome. I mean, I love him. He's my little brother. And I thought, rather than DJ Quest just saying every once in a while on the radio, yo, man, that's my joint. I produced that record. I think he deserves the respect from us, our community, our hip-hop radio listening community, to do an interview directly with DJ Quest. We do interviews all the time with artists, and you know what? I consider my boy to be an artist. Scrappy. Yo. What's up, it's Quest. So, you're not just a disc jockey, man. You're a producer. Yeah, man. I'm trying to get money on all, <laughs> all angles, man. Aside from disc jockeying and mixing at the clubs, isn't that kind of difficult to have three careers going at the same time? Man, it, it, it is real time consuming, but when you love music as much as I do, it just comes to you. Like, you just got to do it. It's like your whole life. Exactly, man. I like get like three hours of sleep, get back up, work on music, work on, on DJing, and that's it. How did you hook up with Risqué and get this record going? When I first met Risqué, I met her at the first annual Ozone Awards, and I thought she was a total bitch. Really? Seriously, I told the manager, I was like, don't even tell her to talk to me because she's a bitch. And on my way home from the Ozone Awards, I get a phone call, and it was Risqué apologizing for the way she came across. So you're a struggling producer, she's a struggling artist, y'all appreciate each other's talent? Exactly, like, ever since that day, she kept in contact with me and let me hear her music and vice versa. And two years later, she called me up and was like, I have an idea for a song and I want you to make the track. She gave me the idea of the song. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the beat tonight. Banged out the beat. It just took off. Do you have anything to do with the writing of the lyrics, Smell the D? <laughs> no, I, I didn't write the lyrics at all. Uh, the lyrics actually came from a real situation that she went through. The song is blowing up. Now you're an accomplished producer, not a struggling producer. How do you leverage that forward? It's kind of hard because now you get a lot of people that come to you that want you to work with their project. And it's, it's hard to tell people, no, I can't work with you because I don't think that you take your music forward. So you're being picky about what artists you collaborate with, which I think is noble. What about getting paid? A lot of people, when they want tracks, you can charge them up front or you can do the split on the public and on the back end. Of course, you got to take care of the business on those tracks. Do you blindly make beats, warehouse them, make them kind of part of your inventory so that if a 50 cent comes calling, you have a couple to throw at them? Always. I got hundreds of tracks just laying here on, on my computer. I just sit home and like I try to make at least like five beats a day. How many are good? You know what, to be honest with you, when I go back and listen to them, just some of them be like, oh, that's trash. And I let an artist hear it be like, oh, that's heat right there. That's heat. It's all on the artist. Being a disc jockey, being in the clubs, subconsciously, osmosis, you're getting a vibe, you're getting a feel, and you're laying down those beats accordingly. You can stay in Fort Myers and do this stuff, but what's your aspirations? I don't mind staying in Fort Myers and doing this because I love Fort Myers. You know, because when I'm out of town, I get homesick. What is Fort Myers lacking from a hip-hop perspective? Unity and this business sense for the music industry because I've realized a lot of artists here don't understand how to work their music. They think that it's easy to just automatically jump on the radio. Quest, as a good friend, I know you're doing big things. I know you're really growing as a producer and it's really awesome as a peer to see you kicking ass on a different platform. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, man, music is my life and I know it's your life too, so you, you can relate. 1055 breaks off the hottest prizes every hour, every day. Every hour. Jay Quest.